Alrighty, so this is going to be a quick little announcement video letting you guys know that the multiplayer FPS procedural animation toolkit is now open in the marketplace and available for purchase. Now, basically what I'm going to be doing in this video is kind of summarizing and showing off some of the main things. However, if you're interested, there is the documentation that will also be linked in the video description that covers basically everything you need to know from point A to Z, including setup. So, to begin, let's head over to the project. Now, if you're familiar with my Ultimate Multiplayer FPS Template plugin, this should really come as no surprise to you, because you, well, if you own it, then you basically already own this plugin, as it offers the same features and the setup is pretty much the same. However, if you don't, and you're unfamiliar with how this system works, basically, it is a completely C++ written system that is meant to be used entirely through Blueprint. So you can use it, again, either in C++ or Blueprint, it's your choice, but again, if you are not like if you're afraid of C++, you don't want to touch it, you want to stick with Blueprint, you have that ability to do so, and it won't set you back, and it won't restrict you really in any way. So to begin, let's dive into what the content folder holds. So here we have our assets. It's just really, as it says, it's the assets, the animation, it's the meshes, it's the textures, all of that. Up next, we have the Blueprints. So we have the two animation Blueprints for the example. For the firearm, you can basically ignore it. It just has an animation notify that gets fired whenever the reload animation is complete. It's nothing special there. It's just for the sake of demoing it like this. So the actual animation blueprint that you need to pay attention to is going to be the anim graph for the character specifically. So this is basically just an anim graph that is layered up to be simple to use that is powered by my animation instance class. Now that's where the C++ comes in because that is something that is ticking. This is something that we want to be performant. So that's why I chose C++. So to begin, let's head over to our character and check out some of the stuff that the character component has to offer. And I'll explain what that character component really is for here in a second. So as you can see, the character component has some basic things. So Ferger starting from the top is third person default. Uh, recently I've started working with improving the third person support for those that want it, but True or false allows you to play certain animations that are done procedurally based upon, you know, this value. So you have true, or sorry, you'll have first person and third person animations here for the poses. So first person short stock pose, third person short stock pose. That'll allow you to play the one that corresponds to your setup based upon this checkbox. So if you're in third person, you play the third person one. Otherwise, you play the first person, and when people look at you, you are also playing the third person one by default. So you can tweak it for either or without having to do just one pose. So next up, we have the movement component sprint speed. So this is basically going to be the max movement component or max walk speed that you would have for your movement component. Then you have your max lookup, down, and lean angle. So your lean angle is like leaning left and right. You have procedural spine, procedural weapon lag, and all that fun stuff. And then we have the firearm collision. So you can turn that on or off and then the collision channel. So the collision channel is here. So if you have things like a wall, obviously if you walk into a wall with a firearm, it's going to push the firearm out of the way. But if you want to have a thing like a cloth, you can set that to ignore the firearm collision channel. And that way when you walk in through a cloth, it's not going to push the firearm out of the way. The firearm will just go through it. So it's all there for gameplay purposes, depending on what you want to do. Next up, we have the firearm. So the firearm is pretty simple, but there's a lot more information in it. So the camera settings, this is things like your camera field of view zoom, how fast it zooms in, and how far away you want your camera to be when you go to actually aim. Now this one here is for first person only. It doesn't affect your third person, so how close you are, how much you want your camera to zoom in like it is, and out, and how fast. So next up, we have the camera distance. So this is how far away, like basically like a modifier of how close or how far you want to be able to aim to your sights. So for example, here I'm at negative five, negative five. You can see I'm basically maintaining a similar distance. I'm not moving the firearm closer or farther away. However, if I change this one to something like, let's do a uh, negative 29. I'm at the type negative uh, 20, but you can see I'm in front of the sight and I'm very close. So it's basically how far or how close you want the firearm to be pushed to you. Next up, we have used fixed firearm or fixed camera distance. Sorry. If this is enabled, this will force your sight, no matter where it is, to be at a fixed position. So here you can see I have two sights. I'll aim with this one. 
I'll switch to this one, and they are at equal distance apart. So this is useful for things like if you have magnified scopes or something like that that have a simulated eye box. So I'll offset this one just a little bit. And you can see it just ever so slightly sucks it in. So it keeps a consistent point of aim or point of distance throughout all of your optics that you're going to be looking through. So next up, we have use left hand IK. So this is whether or not you want to use left hand IK, obviously by the name, pretty straightforward. Uh, again, documentation covers this. Moving on to sockets. So as you can see, the firearm grip socket right now is hand underscore R. So when I spawn the firearm right here, I am actually attaching to the firearm grip socket, which is hand underscore R. Now, if we look at the default for this grip point, let's go ahead and head to the mesh and I'll show you what I mean. Let's find the hand underscore R. Let's add the M4 reference. So as you can see, this is what the socket, or this is what the firearm would look like if it was attached at this point. So let's go ahead and look at the M4 idle. This is what it would look like. Way off, it's attached at the wrist for the root and pointing the completely wrong direction. However, if we look right here, you can see it's actually positioned in the hand. Now that is because of this grip socket offset. So what this allows you to do is position the firearm at a slight offset to whatever bone or socket you have it set to be gripped to. Now this allows you to do things like attach multiple firearms to the same socket without having to create a bunch of different sockets for every single firearm that you have just to get it lined up and positioned right. Instead what you can do is attach them all and just adjust their socket offset so that way you have every single firearm attached to the same bone without cluttering up your skeleton. In my opinion that's very handy and I'm very very surprised that more systems do not have a feature like this because it was relatively straightforward to implement. Next up we have the muzzle socket. Now this was used for the firearm collision. Obviously it's a socket that's going to be out by your muzzle. And here we have the aim socket. Now this is going to be dependent on a couple things. So your firearm here, this one by default, has a socket called S underscore aim and it is positioned right about where the rear sight would be. Then I also have on top of that two sights right here and they're just static mesh components, nothing fancy. They also have a socket called S underscore aim. So you want to create your sockets depending on what they are and then the system will automatically pick it up and use the socket to aim with. So I can basically get rid of this, add another one, add it to anywhere that I want and it'll just pick it up, it'll be good to go and work. So then the left hand IK socket. So this will be a socket on the firearm that is for left hand IK positioning. Nothing too difficult there. As for aiming, we have the shoulder stock offset. So this is specifically for third person view. So if I play with two clients, you can kind of get a rough idea of what I mean. So here, let me go ahead and aim and you can see where the, it's actually being positioned. It's being positioned right on the right ear and back just barely touching the shoulder. Now, let me go ahead and crank the z-axis. I'll do something like 5. I'll over-exaggerate it so you can really kind of see. Now this, oops, there we go. When I aim, as you can see, the firearm comes way up now. And it's really kind of way out of the point of aim. No matter where or which side I aim with, it just pushes it up and out of the way. So that's where the sock offset comes in. So that changes where the positioning is for when you go to aim in third person or remote client view. So you can really kind of fine tune and get it positioned where you want. Then the head aim rotation. So when you're aiming, I don't know if you're able to see or pay attention, when we aim, as you can see the head leans. So that's what that controls. You can just kind of change the degree and get the head positioned where you want. Next up, we have a lot of poses. So the short stock interpolation speed and the short stock pose. Now you can see here we have a bunch of first person and then the exact same ones for third person. So as you can kind of think, like with the shorter stock offset, that corresponds to all this. So as I walk the short stock pose, as you can see it's pushing me back, it's going into the short stock pose like so for the firearm collision and then finally it breaks and we are at our high port pose. So we want, we get to our short stock and then we go into our position. As I look down and up, we switch between low and high port. So that's what all these kind of control. So there's your short stock, there's your high and low port. And then obviously for third person, what other people see, you can have your own specific pose 
so that it looks good for first person and third person separately. So starting from the top, I just showed you the sort stock, now the base pose offset. So this one's zeroed out, but basically here we have our position. So let's just get a point of reference. So here we can see the stock is right about a, a little above the collarbone. Now let's say we want to make it so our base pose has it to where the firearm is, I don't know, a little bit lower and to the right. Well, what we would do is we would modify this base pose offset. So we wanted to go a little bit lower, so let's go like negative five, and to the right, I, I guess also five. So I hit play, and now as you can see, the firearm base pose, it is now lower, and it is off to the right. However, when I go to aim, it still brings it up right where we need it. So here's the point of needing the shorter stock offset. As you can see, the first person aim, it's actually coming to the right eye, which is where I have the camera socket positioned. Now this affects multiple clients differently. So you can see here, my firearm's way down here to the right, but it's still in the right position for third person. So that's where, again, you want to tweak it to get the result you want. Now for the sprint pose. This one's relatively straightforward. This kind of works in conjunction with the sway. So as I sprint, here's my sprint pose, and it's playing the sway on top of that. And everything still works. We still have weapon lag and all that fun stuff. And same thing with the motion to kind of give it a more natural feel instead of being like stiff and robotic. So that's what you tweak there. And then high port and low port are just basically for weapon collision. And you can go into high port and low port and back to center like so. So kind of like ground branch does. Okay, moving on to animation. Sway multipliers. And I need to kind of do this out of order. So we'll start with the curve settings and then we'll work our way up and then back down. Uh, yes, here it is. So shake curve. So this is for the kind of like, as you can see here, I have perform shake after port pose. So basically here I am, I aiming, I'm relatively smooth. If I go from high port to aiming, you can see it does a little shake. So that allows you to play a shake kind of after that point. And you can also play this when you just by simply calling a function as well and it'll handle the system, like it'll handle the behind the scenes for you. So you can just play a little bit of a shake whenever you want based upon certain things like jumping and all that kind of stuff. Then shake curve duration, which is how long it plays. Shake curve speed, which is how fast it's gonna play. And then we have our movement sway curve. So this is going to be our movement sway. So as you can see here, it is playing right now. As I walk, it increases. And then as I sprint, it plays even faster. So that's what this is. It's your yaw, roll, and pitch. It kind of modifies that and all that and handles it together. So moving on back up, we have our sway modifiers. So our movement roll and our movement pitch. So this is going to be how much your firearm rolls when you go to the left and right. And then same thing for up and down and all that kind of stuff. So just kind of stuff to tweak there. We have our pose settings, so aim inter interpolation multiplier, and our port pose interpolation speed. So these, starting from the top here, we have 50. Let's look at how fast we aim. So we do have a base rate that is set in the animation blueprint, but here we can kind of modify it on a per firearm basis. So let's bump this up to 150, something very fast. So now you can see, you aim very quickly, and you can cycle through your sights very quickly. Moving on to the port pose, same thing. It basically controls how fast you go in and out of these poses. Moving on down to the recoil. So the recoil is kind of like my pride and joy of this little system. As you control the randomness to it, you control the range of the randomness, and you also control the recoil location and the rotation by a graph. So we'll start with the location. So the green is going to be back towards your camera. So it's the stock is coming into you from the impulse. And then we're going to drop it down just a little bit. So it comes back a good bit and down ever so slightly per shot. Now for the locate or the rotation, what we have here is starting from the pitch, which is the red, the muzzle is going to come up. And then as it comes back to settle, it's going to come down a little bit too far. And then it's going to come right back up to center. So you kind of like overcompensate your recoil. In my opinion, that just kind of leaves a nice effect. Then you have things like, I believe this one here would be the roll 
So this would be the yaw, and then this one would be the roll, you know, left and right. So you can tweak it how you want, and then you have your randomness per value. So you can kind of tweak it so pitch is between 1 and 2. We can change this between 1 and 10, and I'll show you the difference in values there. So I shoot pretty high. I'll aim it here. And they're all going to probably be actually pretty high because of the value range. Better yet, I'll do, let's do just negative one and one. That should give you a rough example. So you can see it's straight across. Some of them are down. Some of them are moving up ever so slightly. It's kind of all bouncing around in the same general area. But I like to leave between one and two. So that way your firearm, when you recoil, the muzzle's only going to come up and not down. And then for the roll and y'all, you might want some little bounce around. So the roll can go left and right based upon the shot, and the y'all can go left and right based on the shot. And you can also easily make it favor one side. Like people commonly associate like the M4 with kind of recoiling a little bit up and to the right depending on the setup and break. So we could have this favor the right hand side by doing something like negative two and eight. Now this will mostly favor going up and to the right like so. So those are kind of like some of the things that you can do with the system. So moving on to our animation blueprint, it's relatively straightforward. As you can see, everything is set up in layers, but we have some settings here for the class defaults as well. So we have the option to use the procedural spine, so looking up and down, which you can replace with your own you know, aim offset and drive it your own way. It's up to you. Uh, whether or not you want this to even by default use left hand IK. And then the aim interpolation speed, which this actually honestly you really don't need to use it's overridden by the firearm you have the aim interpolation speed this is like your defaults your sight sights interpolation speed again the defaults your rotation lag reset so how fast it comes back to center for both rotation and movement the right hand bone that you're going to be having by default for your character and then invert rotation lag so inverting rotation lag as you can see as i look left and right the firearm lags behind so as i look right the firearm points left, you can invert this result by just checking that little box, and now you have the opposite. So now you kind of drive it with the firearm, so to speak. So just little things like that to kind of help you uh, do what you need. And then lastly, we have a good bit of helper functions. So like, for example, perform procedural recoil. All you have to do is right click on really anywhere, go down to, why am I looking so low? FPS Anim. And here you can see all of the functions that you have access to here for what you want to do. So you can do things like get what site you have to be aimed with, the stock offset, all your character settings, and all this fun stuff. And you can call helper functions like cycle sites, which does what you can kind of think. Uh, refresh current site, depending on your system, how you want to have it set up. This will help re kind of align your site if you need to. Uh, you can control your aim sway, you can set your aim sway, you can set your lean amount, all that stuff. You can tweak it how you need. So for example, if you wanted to have it to where you're aiming and you want to steady your aim, you could have it press a key. You would just set your, set your aim sway multiplier and it would help steady out your breath. It would make it move a lot less. So again, there's a lot in there. It's just up to you to kind of look through it. And you can also follow the documentation. Now, I'll be having more videos on how to use this system in the future, but this should pretty much cover everything you need to know. So, as always, if you have any questions or anything like that, there is a link to my Discord down here where you can ask any question you want. And if you want to gain support, feel free to do so, and I will try to help you out.